What's up folks? I'm back with another reaction, back with some more J-drama score. We're going to listen to some score from a movie that finishes off a show I have talked about and I have reacted to a couple tunes from, uh, but this is from the final or the finale of Hani Yori Dango. Uh, it's a show that literally means Boys Over Flowers it is based on a manga. It combines comedy, drama, emotion, romance, um, like with a lot of other J-dramas I've talked about that are sort of in the comedy, romance, sort of Venn diagram, it starts a bit more silly, a bit more comedic as the show goes along. Uh, the comedy doesn't disappear, but it perhaps becomes a little more balanced with increasingly emotional scenes and as romantic drama heightens between not just the main two characters, but some other characters too. Um, yeah, the show becomes increasingly serious. I would argue that season one, again, it becomes more serious over time, but it is uh, pretty light and pretty funny for the most part. By the time you get to season two, it kind of does take on like a slightly more serious tone, and you know, in particular, there's like some side stories that are like, you know, different than anything that happens in season one. Um, even though, again, it's the same show, it's the same, you know, essence, but like I said, it sort of transitions from more funny and silly to more emotional and romantic and dramatic. Uh, by the time you get to the finale, or the final, uh, Honey or Dango final, it really does have a more, like, serious emotional bent. Um, as quickly as possible, because I have talked about it before, the show relates to this blue-collar girl who sort of gets to go to this private elite high school. I think she, like, wins a competition. But everybody else there is, like, super wealthy. They come from powerful, influential families. She comes from a very blue-collar family and, you know, wouldn't normally be at that school. So she's kind of looked down upon by pretty much everybody there, and there's these four like male students who kind of run the school, and because they're all like either heirs to large corporations or um, you know the the son the one is the son of a like prominent yakuza figure, and so these are all like you know um, uh, inheritors of like large family estates. So like even the teachers don't mess with them; they don't like you know stop them or like make them from make them go to class or whatever. So in steps Makano, the name of the female character, to this dynamic, and at first the leader, if you will, of the F4, the four guys, this guy named Domioji, he's sort of, you know, who the hell are you and you're going to come in here and, you know, with your low style and your, like, your ratty clothes and whatever, and he's really harsh on her, really mean to her, but she doesn't stand for it. She has a history, as you learn, of kind of standing up against bullies and she punches him, and no one's ever done that to him. Like, he's always just, you know, told everyone what to do, and, like, you know, no one really questions him, even his, like, three friends who kind of give him grief sometimes, but, like, they basically kind of let him do what he wants, and he's sort of enamored with her after that. He becomes interested by her. At first, he wants to punish her, but the more, like, he gets to know her, he kind of, like, man, she's actually something. So it's their story over two seasons. And again, there's a lot of other characters, some other storylines, but it's fundamentally the story of Domioji and Makano. And by the time you get to the finale, um, one of the things, you know, Domioji's mom is antagonistic the whole first two seasons. Um, she's just, she doesn't want her son to get involved with what she views as kind of like a street rat and someone who is not worthy of being the wife of, you know, her son who's going to be the leader of this big company once she steps down. And she's very ruthless, and she lies, and she manipulates, and whatever. But then you find out in the finale that, you know, in a way, what she's been doing is making sure that he is ready to take on the company. And number two, you find out that actually she doesn't really dislike Makino. She just really wanted to know if Makino was there for her son and so on. And so they're put into a circumstance where, you know, their relationship is tested, and their connection is... You know, we've kind of been drifting toward being together for like two seasons now, but like, you know, if it, if the chips, you know, are really down on the table, like, you know, which way are you going to go? How is it going to swing? And so they have to kind of like prove their love to each other and to others over the course of the movie. Um, and so, you know, there's some highs and lows in that. And there's a moment, you know, more than in anything that happens in the first two seasons where it feels like the it could be off, like it, it might not work and they it, they might not be together. Um, and sort of in that moment, you end up hearing this piece, uh, which is interesting because this piece is called uh, Couple's Destination. Um, so it's funny, like it implies a journey, <clears throat> it implies a, a transition from one place to another, conceptual, emotional, and so on. And so, you know, without really spoiling anything, by the end of the movie, you do get what you want, but there are some scary moments, if you will, along the way. 
So it's interesting to call this tune, which has a very sad and like maybe things aren't going to work out feel to it. It's interesting to call it Couples Destination when, you know, you have a sense that in the end they're probably going to be together. So here we go. Oh, and the soundtrack, sorry, uh, for the finale is done by um, Kosuke Yamashita. So this is Kosuke or Yamashita Kosuke to do it Japanese style. Uh, and the tune is Couples Destination from the Honey Ori Dango final soundtrack, which came out 2008. thinking uh, during that and I was sort of getting emotional I had to like wait to say it um, if you've ever been in a relationship where you, you know, things aren't going perfectly and you're not quite sure where you stand and you're you know very invested in it but you're worried it's sort of slipping out of your hands if you've ever been in a relationship where you've had that feeling that tune I think speaks uh, to that experience um, unfortunately you know I've been in a couple relationships where that felt like it was the case now different sort of it played out differently in the, the two different relationships but um I know what that feels like and you know part of it is I know the sort of context when that song plays or that tune plays in the film um but I think even independently of that you can get to that place just from hearing the sonic so um yeah shout out to uh, uh, Yamashita Kosuke a really cool tune we're going to come back for more tunes on this um again it's one of the first shows i ever watched now the original series i think was 06 and then the second series or the second season was 07 the movie was 08 i mentioned late uh, before i reacted to one tune from it 10 years later they came back with like a sequel show called hana nochi hare um so yeah more on that soon i have the soundtrack to that too um but yeah i love that tune more from the soundtrack coming do let me know what you think i'll see you next time <laughs>